Hello everyone, it's Sandra, and welcome to today's video. Today I thought it would be fun to talk about best-selling, super popular, super hyped products that didn't work for me. I have to thank my friend Kate for the inspiration. She recently did this. I think she called it Sephora bestsellers that I hate. I absolutely loved watching Kate's video, even though she roasted like half of my favorite products. Fun reminder that not everything is going to work for everyone. Another thing I realized watching her video, which focused on Sephora bestsellers, I feel like most of the Sephora bestsellers are products that are very, very, very popular, very hyped on TikTok. And one of the things that I personally don't like about TikTok beauty content is it's very fast paced and there is very little context and very little follow through with a lot of products. You just see somebody holding up a product telling you it's amazing. Everything always turns really quickly, trends on TikTok change really quickly and I'm not that type of beauty consumer. I'm 35 years old, I know what works for me, I know what I like, and I'm less likely to fall victim to impulse beauty buying. When I was kind of going through the Sephora bestsellers trying to aggregate my list, I realized that a lot of these products were super hyped TikTok products, and a lot of them I didn't buy because I'm, I've become a much more discerning consumer. I kind of like to march to the beat of my own drum, I like to work on my own pace, and I try not to be so impulsive with beauty products, mostly because I am really happy with what I already have. So in order for me to get excited about a new product, it just really has to tick, like, tick all my boxes. It really has to impress me. It really has to be something that, it, it has to enchant me in a, a special way. The Sephora bestsellers list was not enough for me. I also hopped on over to Nordstrom to check out their beauty bestsellers. To, to help me kind of aggregate a fun list to, t to talk about and um, yeah, share in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. The first super popular, super hyped, very well-loved product that unfortunately does not work for me is the Laneige Sleeping Lip Mask. This is such a cult favorite and let me tell you, I have tried to like this mask many times. I like the fact that now it comes in a bunch of different flavors because I wasn't really crazy about the original flavor. It really doesn't moisturize my lips. I don't know if there's an ingredient in there that I'm particularly sensitive to, but every time I use that overnight, I wake up and my lips just feel drier and crustier. Like it's still, it stays on my lips throughout the night, but in the morning, my lips are, like the actual lip skin itself is not any softer or smoother than it was the night before. I also have realized over time that I don't like lip balms in tubs. I just don't. I Give me a tube, give me a wand applicator. One overnight lip treatment product that I discovered, actually thanks to Kate from State of Kate, and I love it, it works for me, it's the Fit Glow Night Lip Serum. It's a clear, lip balm, it's a liquid lip balm, it comes in a tube, almost like a lip gloss. I find that that actually helps moisturize and soften my lips. I put it on at night. If my lips are particularly dry, I will usually do a light layer of an occlusive ointment like Aquaphor or Vaseline just to really seal in those beneficial ceramides and um, like moisturizing ingredients in the lip serum and then I wake up in the morning, my lips feel so much better. The next product that I see a lot of people rave about and that I tried and I really wished it would work for me because it sounds really nice, the ingredients list is really nice and it's the Ilia, the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint with SPF 40, I believe. One of my best friends, Vanessa, she swears by this product and whenever she wears it, her and I, you know, we always do little makeup check-ins with each other. We share a lot of, you know, unfiltered close-up photos of our skins and, and we talk about makeup all the time. Every single time she wears this product, her skin looks so, so beautiful. I mean, she has beautiful skin to begin with, but um, this is one of her favorite holy grail products. So I had always been dying to try it and Unfortunately, it just does not work for me. Now, her and I do have different skin types. Her, her skin is a lot more dry than, than mine. I'm kind of oily combination. In the winter time, I am kind of like normal to slightly dry on my cheeks, but pretty consistently oily in my T-zone year round. And even in the winter time, I cannot get this product to look good on me. It's like, it's just, it's oily, it's streaky. It just does not, does not work well with, with, my, uh, with my, my skin type. 
I'm probably going to send her my bottle and I'm sure I'm sure she will use it up. The next product is a fragrance product and it is by one of my favorite fragrance brands. I think my favorite fragrance brand. If I had to choose just one brand of fragrances to wear for the rest of my life, it would probably be Le Labo. I think out of any brand, I think Le Labo is the one I buy the most. I have the most fragrances of and I want this fragrance to work for me so badly, but it smells so badly on me. It's almost comical. And it is Another 13. Now, Another 13 is not quite as culty. It's not quite as best-selling as the best-seller of the brand, which is Santal 33. If you are a Lilabo fan, Santal 33 is probably, you know, number one. Um, Another 13 is probably number two. In terms of its cult status amongst fellow Lilabo lovers, it tends to be the one that I hear talked about the most. On my skin, my skin is just like, no girl, we are not having this today. The next product on my list is the famous Laura Mercier setting powder. I don't even want to admit how many times I have bought this product over the years because I've had a long journey with this product in the 10 plus years I've been, you know, a beauty enthusiast online. And every time I get it, I, I'm disappointed by it. I just have to kind of reconcile the fact that it just does not really do anything for me. I am glad that it exists. I'm glad that it works for so many people. I did see that they came out with a talc-free version. So I'm curious if you've tried both, if you have oily combination skin, let me know in the comments. The Old Faithful, the classic translucent for all over the face was a no for me. The next product, another cult classic for many, many, many years that also had a recent resurgence because of TikTok as the newer generation of beauty lovers discovered this product and started talking about it. I think it was like sold out again. It's the Clinique Black Honey <laughs> Lipstick. And nothing makes me feel older than when beauty trends emerge on TikTok and I realize that I'm old enough to have experienced it the first time it came around. It's, it's very humbling because I feel like I, on the inside, I feel a lot younger. But uh, yeah, Clinique Black Honey didn't work for me the first time around. Sure as hell it will not work for me the second time around. So I did not repurchase that product just to participate in the trend because it just didn't look good on me. I don't know, it just doesn't really work with the natural pigmentation of my lips. I think it can look so incredible on other people, but on me, it just never did what it was supposed to do. It never made me feel the way I like to feel it when I put on a, lip, a lipstick. So that's a no for me. The next product is something that I was actually surprised to still see on bestseller lists because this brand as a whole kind of really dropped off from my radar. I was really into it at one point. The Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. A few years ago for a brief moment, I was on the Too Faced PR list and they would send out this mascara every single month. Every single month I would get this mascara in the mail and I would email and say, sorry, you know, just, just to save you some packaging, don't send me this mascara anymore because it just doesn't work for me. But I don't think my email went to the right person because I kept getting this mascara in the mail. So I just started distributing it amongst, you know, friends and coworkers because this mascara never worked for me. It always transferred like crazy, but some of the friends that I gave it to, it still has remained their holy grail mascara. It works really well for them. So it's one of those things, you know, I think mascara in particular is such a personal thing. The next product is an example of genius marketing and several, you know, marketing advertising books that I had read over the years mention this brand and this particular product and how clever the marketing and how successful it became because of that clever storytelling. And it's La Mer. The good old fashioned creme de la mer is still their best selling product and that product never worked for me. Now arguably it's not designed to work for my particular skin type. I had also tried the soft cream version. I have tried um, the hydrating mask. I've tried their cleanser. I've tried a few products from the brand and most of them left me wanting more except the, uh, the treatment lotion. The treatment lotion is fantastic. It's like an essence type of 
type of thing you you put it on you know after cleansing morning and night and that product I I still think about it I actually used it up at the beginning of the year and I keep meaning to repurchase it but I'm, I'm just waiting to use up some other stuff that product was was worth it for me the next cult favorite that didn't work for me is the famous the classic polish choice 2% BHA exfoliant this product is consistently one of the top recommended products for people with my skin concerns. You know, if you're oily combination, if you're dealing with, you know, acne, congestion, this product is always very, very highly recommended by estheticians, by skincare content creators, by dermatologists on all platforms, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. I see this product everywhere and um, it just doesn't work for me. I never loved it. I never loved the texture of it. I found it a little bit too oily. Even if I pushed through my hate for the texture, I never saw the incredible results that so many other people claim to have. I had just found so many other products that work better for me. And even within the Paula's Choice range, they recently came out with a 1% um, BHA that's in a gel form from their Calm range that I actually have been incorporating into my routine just, just like once or twice a week on my nose or on, on areas prone to blackheads. And that one I've actually been really liking. That one is a bit more gentle and the texture is a lot nicer. But the famous 2% BHA exfoliant never really worked for me. Next, we have another Laura Mercier product. I apologize, Laura Mercier. I do love your brand, but uh, this product did not work for me in the multiple iterations of it that I've tried over the years. And it's the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. The classic, the illuminating, the oil-free, name it, and I've tried it, and it just didn't really do it for me. It just never really gave me what I want from a complexion product, and there are other products that um, that just performed so much better for me. I prefer the Chantecai Just Skin Tinted Moisturizer or the Chanel Water Fresh Tint if I want just something like a little fresh, hydrated, glow, tint type of thing. The Laura Mercier just didn't cut it for me. The next product is another mascara that, again, I have friends that love it, and every time I see a luxury beauty creator use this mascara, it just looks so good. But it doesn't work for me, and it's the Chanel Le Volume Mascara, a very, I think it's the best-selling mascara from Chanel. They recently launched a new one that's supposed to be good as well. This mascara, again, smudges, it barely lasts like an hour on my lashes before it starts to just rain down on me. The next product is another one of those products that made me feel old because I remember the first time it came around and I had this blush the first time it came around and it's the Dior Rosy Glow. If you've been watching my content for a long time, you will probably remember me talking about the original Dior Rosy Glow. And I, I bought it, it was an impulse purchase. I remember I bought it at Shoppers Drug Mart using my optimum points, shout out to my Canadian viewers. And I bought it because of the packaging. The packaging was beautiful. The original packaging was very similar to the packaging they have now, except the original used to come with a little brush. I was just so charmed by the packaging. It was this gorgeous, clear acrylic compact, this bright, bright pop of pink and I really liked this blush when I first bought it, but once the novelty of it wore off, it didn't last the test of time in my makeup collection. I think I decluttered it after about two years of having it because I stopped reaching for it. So I was reaching for it constantly when I first bought it, like the first, you know, the first six months, six to eight months, maybe first year. And then after that, it didn't become a color that was a staple. It, you know, it got, it got discontinued and then it got brought back again. And it, again, it went viral on TikTok. This is, this is still a very, very popular product. It was really hard to get at one point. It was sold out everywhere. I can see why every time I see somebody use it, I get like a tinge of like, oh, should I buy it again? Oh my God, I get a little bit of like FOMO, but then I sit with myself, with my thoughts, and I think, will this product stand the test of time? We've been here before and it did not. What makes you think that it will, it will change? At the end of the day, I'm just not that drawn to cool toned pinks. There's a very specific look when I feel like it works, but I have to be in the mood for that look. And that's not a mood that I'm in 
consistently. Even when I want a pink blush, I like a little bit of warmth. I feel like that's just, I don't know, that just looks better. That just looks, works better with the rest of, of my vibe. So I think I'm going to sit it out this time. They did launch a coral version too, which looks really pretty. And I think if I had to choose, I would probably choose that one. But I already have coral blushes that I love. I really don't need another one. And blushes last a really long time, especially powder blushes. And I'm trying to, you know, like I said before, I try to be more mindful about the beauty products I bring into my life. And I'm trying to think long-term, especially with a long-term product like a powder blush. So when I watch somebody use it and I feel the FOMO kicking in, I usually reach for this product in my makeup collection that kind of satisfies the craving for me. This is the Pearl Beauty Girl Next Door blush stick and it's not as cool toned as the Dior, but it's a very bright, very bright pink that has just a little bit more warmth to it. I also like the fact that this is, you know, it's a blush stick. So it's a cream formula. It's um, a lip and cheek stick. So usually I will dab a little bit of it on my lips as well. And I feel like it just makes the look a bit more cohesive. This is what I reach for to kind of satisfy my Dior cravings. Let's end on another high note on another fragrance. And this fragrance is arguably the fragrance of the moment. It's been the hottest fragrance for the last two years. I feel like I had been slowly seeing it talked about more and more and more and more. It used to be kind of like a niche favorite and then it just exploded in popularity in 2020 and just increasing, increasing, increasing in popularity over time. And now there are also a lot of, you know, lower priced alternatives, a lot of brands making dupes. But we're talking about the original here. We're talking about the original Maison Francis Kirk John Baccarat Rouge 540 perfume. This perfume smells very good. I, I can't say that this is not a good smell. It is very interesting. It's, um, it is kind of like a masterpiece in, in perfuming in that it's, it's sweet, but it's also fresh and it's also woodsy at the same time. It's a really beautiful, interesting mix of these elements. It, it has super, super strong projection. Is that what it's called? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a fragrance expert, but it's, it, it lasts a long time on the skin. And it also is a kind of fragrance where like people will smell you from a distance, but um, it just doesn't smell good on me. And it doesn't, it's not me, you know? I, I can appreciate it and I can always smell it when somebody's walking by having it. Or um, in Miami, I smelled it a lot um, and I smell it in elevators, you know? And I, it's very recognizable, it smells really good, but it's just not me. It's not a me scent. It doesn't smell good on me. I feel like over, as it kind of marinates on my skin after a while, the amber really comes through and I don't love super, super ambery fragrances on my skin. Um, that note tends to be really overwhelming to me over time. And um, yeah, so on my skin, it doesn't wear nicely, but I can definitely appreciate it. I think it is, like I said, I think it is a fragrance masterpiece, but it's just not, just not for me. That's it for uh, for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't hurt your feelings if uh, I uh, talked about any products that you love. I think it's just a fun reminder that the beauty world is very vast and that we have so many choices and not everything is meant for everyone. And that's totally cool. Part of the fun of being a part of this community and part of the fun of watching so many other creators is learning about different things and how different things work for different people. For me, that's that's really enjoyable and it makes being a part of this community really great. So let me know, what are some cult best-selling favorite products that never work for you or that just never really did it for you? Let's chat about it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to Kate for the inspiration for this video. I had so much fun doing it. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.